Good morning, cowboys and cowgirls. Are we all happy this morning? Okay, we're going to have a great day. We had a nice prayer meeting just a few minutes ago, and we're calling the Holy Spirit down. And it's going to be a great day. Amen? Amen. How many vote for that? All right. Well, let's pray and get the Holy Spirit on the job. Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you that you're going to, going to make yourself known in our, in our midst today, Father. We want to feel your presence. We want to know your presence. We want to know when we leave here that we've been touched by you, Father. We want to honor you and glorify your name, Father, in everything that we do. And we just ask you to bless this service and touch us, Father, in a way that we'll know that you're God. So we just ask it today, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to have everybody stand up. This is just not a sit-down song coming up here. So we're going to start it. Uh, we're going to start it slow. And uh, the version I he had uh, heard on uh, the radio a few days ago was fast and then slow. So we're going to do the opposite because I, I, <laughs> a lot of you will know this song. I think Jehovah Jireh. My provider, His grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, His grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches in glory, he gives his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. I think I would consider this a Jewish song, a Jewish melody, but uh, it's, we've heard and seen a, a lot of things about Israel this week, and they've had a, a tough time. A lot of you have been there, a lot of you have been praying for Israel. Okay, let's do this. Jehovah Jireh. My provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. But God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. He gives his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah.
run. My provider's grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider's grace is sufficient for me. According to his riches and glory, he gives his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Holy, holy, holy 
They say this mountain can't be moved They say the change will never break But they don't know you like I do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. We know that hope is never lost. Oh, for there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what, there is power in your name. So much power. So much power in your name. They will not break the unbreakable. God, we believe. For it from the impossible, we'll meet a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for
up against the wall And your mountain seems so tall Just raise your hands and say, Lord, you're all I need. You're everything to me, and he'll take the pain away. When it seems you're all alone, praise his name. When you feel you can't go on, just raise your hands and say, Greater is he that is within me. You can praise the hurt away. Greater is he that is within me. You can praise the hurt away. You'll just praise his name. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. 
I can hear, hear the, the brush of, of angels' wings. wings. I see glory on your face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Your presence is in this place. We sing your glory down from heaven. We sing your glory down from heaven. In this place. I just see the Lord walking up and down the aisles calling to people to come out to him those who have hurts those who have needs those who just want to come and sit at his feet and praise him and, and be taught by him he's in, he's in here today and he's beckoning to each heart here today surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. This is a time in our service when we like to give our body an opportunity to participate in. Uh, if anyone has a word from God that's for the body, we're not looking for a testimony. We're looking for a word from God. If he's given something on your heart that you think you should share, come forward and let's do it right now. Amen. How many of you know that he's in this place? Amen. Amen. Well, I do believe that he's in this place and he's in each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, as I was reading and studying, and I had some great help yesterday. I had some great help. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I believe this is for each and every one that's here today. Because this is a prayer for the church. It's in 1 Thessalonians 3. Starting about verse 11, it says, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you. So that he may establish you, establish your hearts blameless in holiness before the God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. And I just want to add, in Jesus' name, amen. Anyone else? 
else have a word? That's it? Well, how about if, uh, is the Lord in this place? We've talked about shouting. We've talked about everything and sang about it. How about let's just give him a shout. Well, you know, there, there's unity. There's unity. Make some noise. yee Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Jimmy's always ready. Don Welcome, said, Pastor Jimmy. Don said to come on, so I'm I here. heard he had a really good fishing day yesterday. Oh, don't mention that, please. Yeah. Clark invited me to go with his two sons and grandsons and granddaughters on his uh, deck, deck pontoon boat, Canyon Lake, bass fishing. So we went bass fishing. And we did catch some bass, but we also caught storms, rain. <laughs> So by 9.30, we were all soaking wet, and uh, we came home like nine wet rats. <laughs> but we had a good time, and we made memories. Right, Wesley? We made memories. Praise God. It was good. Amen. Wasn't this amazing? This, this, board, this camp board over here? Amazing. I mean, there was about half of those left last Sunday. Somebody come and got them. That's thousands of dollars. Praise God. All the kids are going to camp, and we got money for vacation Bible school. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. Amen. Awesome. That's good. And uh, as was mentioned, my son Tim and his wife Elizabeth will be here Wednesday night. Uh, Tim is a, a marvelous preacher. You'll love to hear him preach. And Elizabeth, if you close your eyes, you will think you're hearing an angel from heaven singing. She sings like an angel. And she's got a new song. It's so powerful, and she's going to sing that. I'd ask her to lead us in two or three courses, and then just do a little mini concert before Tim preaches. So it, it'll be it'll be quite uh, awesome. Praise God, Amen. Nathan, I, I saw you 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 guys holding that little baby a while ago, a little baby boy, right? Weren't you? Didn't you hold that little baby boy? And you were enjoying it, weren't you? Yeah, I could prophesy something, but I won't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you for this wonderful day now. We thank you for Pentecost Sunday being celebrated in the church all around the world. God, we would ask that anything you want to do, we're ready. Let your spirit come like the sound of a mining rushing wind. May cloven tongues of fire rest upon us. May we speak with new tongues. Lord, everything that you want to do today, we ask you to do it in the precious name of Jesus. We know you want your church empowered. You want your church full of Pentecostal power that we can do the works of Jesus and bring in the kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, as we do know, this is Pentecostal Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, uh, and thousands of churches around the world today are celebrating uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the church. The word Pentecost simply means 50. You remember that Israel's calendar was built around three religious festivals. There was Passover in the spring, there was Pentecost in the summer, and tabernacles in the fall. It was at Passover that the lamb was, sh was slain and the blood was shed. Fifty days later came the Pentecost feast. It was a harvest festival. It was the time of the bringing in of the grain into the, into, the, into the barns. And so remember, everything that we say today about Pentecostal power is related to bringing in the harvest. It is related to telling people about Jesus. It is related to seeing souls brought into the kingdom of God. Praise God. And so, uh, 50 days after the death and resurrection of Jesus at Passover, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the church. Let me just read about it. It's, it's so awesome. 
Acts chapter 2, we're all familiar with it. Not up there, I, I wanted us to read this one. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place, in one accord. Someone has said that the great miracle of Pentecost was so not, not so much God pouring out His power upon the church and marvelous signs and wonders and people speaking in tongues, but maybe the great miracle of Pentecost was that you could get 120 people together in one place, in one accord, for 10 days. That's a miracle. They were all in one place, in one accord. Praise God. And then look what happened. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire, distributed and resting on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the words. Praise God. Now what I want to do today is briefly to lay a biblical foundation for this power experience. Uh, and as I, we study these passages today, you're going to see that the, the, this power experience is called by six different phrases. Sometimes you'll see it's referred to as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In another place, it'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. In another place, it'll be the coming of the Spirit upon you. In another place, being clothed with power from on high. In another place, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then it's also called the promise of the Father. All of those terms, those phrases, represent the same thing. This power, Pentecostal experience that God wants to bring upon his church, praise God. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. The apostle says, Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, we would expect when he says that, we're fixing to find out something about the will of the Lord. Don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And here it is. It's in two commands. One of them is negative, one of them is positive. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. There's the negative. But be filled with the Spirit. Now, the obvious truth of that passage is, is that man without God is empty, and he has to be filled with something. He has a God-shaped vacuum within him. And he, he will always seek to fill that vacuum. And so the apostle says, don't fill that vacuum with the intoxicating things of this world like wine. But be filled with the supernatural new wine of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, where it says there, be filled with the Holy Spirit... Actually, in the Greek language, that is the present imperative. And it simply means, be now filled and continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. The, the now is the initial baptism of the Holy Spirit. The continual is, as we read the Bible, as we pray, as we fellowship, as we leave ourselves open to further encounters of the Holy Spirit, as all that is happening, we can stay continually Filled with the Holy Spirit. So be now filled with the Holy Spirit and continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. <clears throat> okay, let's begin to lay this foundation now for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, notice my simple outline that I made. First of all, I want you to see that it is a biblical experience. Uh, it is not a fanatical or particularly emotional experience. It can involve emotions, but it's not a fanatical experience. You don't, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't have to roar like lions or bark like dogs or crow like roosters or roll on the floor. None of that is in the Bible. Simply when they received the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, they spoke with new tongues. So here's the definition. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a biblical, empowering experience, usually subsequent to conversion. It can happen at the same time. 
but usually it's subsequent to conversion and it is available and receivable by any thirsty believer. Praise God. Notice second, not only is it a biblical experience, it is an empowering experience. The good news of today is that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Praise God. We know that word power is the Greek word dunamis, but we get our word dynamite from. You shall receive dynamite power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. The good news this morning, there is Pentecostal power for all of us in this room. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The third thing about this experience, it is, it is, it is a gift. It cannot be earned. Just like the new birth, salvation can't be earned. The gift of the Holy Spirit cannot be earned. It is a gift. Let's look at Luke 11 and verses 9 through 13. And this is Jesus talking and uh, you'll see in a moment he's talking about receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you'll find Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. Let that one get in your heart. This morning, some of you are going to ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What does it say? Everyone who asks might, might receive? No. Everyone who asks, receives, praise God. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, will the door be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish instead of a fish, would give him a serpent. Even we, you know, we, know, we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that. Or if he asked for an egg, would he give him a scorpion? Certainly not. If you then, who are evil, and in comparison to God we are, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who... Ask him. Praise God. The key word in that passage is ask. Five times. Five times. It speaks about asking. And so it is a gift. You can't earn it. You simply ask for it and God will give you that good gift of the Holy Spirit. And then fourth, it is promised to us. First of all, it is promised in picture and in type in the Old Testament. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 14, <clears throat> verses 11 through 18. Now, this is the ceremony of the cleansing of the leper. In Scripture, leprosy is a type and a picture of sin. It often starts, started small, began to spread, ultimately killing its victim. And the wages of sin is death. So leprosy is a picture of sin. And when a man had been healed of leprosy, he had to go to the priest and they would take him through a cleansing ceremony so that he could now re-enter society as a healed, disinfected person. So look what happens. Here's the ceremony. And the priest who cleanses him shall set the man who is to be cleansed and these things before the Lord at the door of the tent of meeting or the tabernacle. And the priest shall take one of the male lambs and offer it for a guilt offering or a trespass offering along with the log of oil and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb in the place where they kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the holy place. For the guilt offering like the sin offering belongs to the priest. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the great toe of his right foot. And now, before we go on to the next verse, notice that this one, this leper, this sinner, is cleansed by blood from head to toe, praise God. Yes. Blood is placed on the ear, symbolizing the cleansing of everything that enters his mind, Blood is placed on the thumb of the right hand, symbolizing the cleansing of everything, all of his work, everything he puts his hand to. And blood is placed on the big toe of the right foot, symbolizing the cleansing of his walk before God. So he is literally cleansed 
by blood, the blood of the slain lamb from head to toe, praise God. Can we say amen to that? That's what Jesus did for us, praise God. Hallelujah. Now, any Baptist would say amen to that, right? Right. <laughs> any Baptist would say, yes, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin from head to toe. But so many stop there. Next verse, Miss Betty. Then the priest shall take some of the log of oil. How I many of you know what oil is symbolizing in the Bible? It is a picture of the Holy Spirit, a picture of the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. The priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand and dip his right finger in the oil that is in the left hand and sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. Now watch what happens. And some of the oil that remains in his hand, the priest shall put on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the guilt offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand, he shall put on the head of him who is to be cleansed. Then the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord. And so upon this blood-washed believer, amen, you have to be washed in the blood before you can receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. On this blood-washed believer now comes an anointing from heaven, oil, all the way from the top of the head to the soles of his feet, amen, amen. upon the blood of the guilt holy. That's what God wants to do for us. He wants all of us to apply the blood of Jesus so that every sin is taken care of. And then he wants us to be open to receive this anointing from heaven, this, this power anointing of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. That's pretty clean, pretty plain picture, isn't it? That's Old Testament type. Now let's go to the New Testament. So it's, not, it's not only promised to us in the Old Testament by picture and type, but it's promised by the Father God. Look, look, look what the Father God says. In Luke 24 and verse 48 and 49, it says, You are witnesses of these things. But behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power on high. Now, Jesus spoke that to his disciples on the evening of the first Easter Sunday. And he's saying to them, don't go out and try to be a missionary. Don't go out and try to teach a Sunday school class. Don't go out and try to witness. Don't do anything until you be clothed with power from on high. And that's called the promise of the Father. Uh, also, uh, notice in Acts 1, verse 3, Jesus now is appearing to his disciples during those 40 days. And it says to them, he presented himself alive with his, after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during the 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. How many of you like to have been in that Sunday school class? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the living resurrected word teaching the written word to his disciples. Oh, I'd have loved to have been there. Praise God. And while staying with him, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so the promise of the Father in Luke is connected be with being clothed with power from on high, the uh, promise of the Father in Acts 1 is connected with, praise God, the, the verse that we, that we just read there about the power of God. Praise the Lord. Now, evidently, the Father made a promise to Jesus before he ever came into this earth. And he might have said something like this, Son, it's time we get our kids back. They've all gone into the land of sin. And they're under destruction it's time we get our kids back. And I want you to go into the earth. Take on human body, human farm. And I want you to live in a sin-filled, sickness-filled, rebellion-filled world. And never sin once in thought, word, or deed. And then we'll take that sinless life of yours. And it'll be offered up as a sin sacrifice for all of the sins of mankind. And if you'll do that, on the third day, I'll raise you from the dead, praise God. And 
when I raise you from the dead, I give to you this promise that you can pour out the Holy Spirit on everyone who believes upon your name. That's my promise to you, son. You can pour out the Holy Spirit upon them. That's a great promise that the Father made to Jesus. Praise God. So it's, it's, it is, <clears throat> it's promised to us in type in the Old Testament. It's promised by the Father God. But notice now, it's promised by Jesus. <clears throat> Look in John 14, 15 through 17. Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another counselor, another comforter, another helper, another paraclete. And the word another means another one just like me. To be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Notice that the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now notice the three relationships to the Holy Spirit that we're to have. <clears throat> First of all, Jesus says, you know him because he is with you. Now, remember now these disciples, they're not yet born again. They don't have the Spirit of God living in them. But they know that the Holy Spirit has been with them because they're walking in relationship to the Spirit-filled Jesus. They've seen Him do mighty miracles. He's even sent them out to do miracles. So the, they know the Holy Spirit is all around. The Holy Spirit is with them. But then, <clears throat> and, and I think all of us can probably say, before we were ever born again, somehow God was with us. Amen. He was calling us. He was wooing us. He was drawing us. At times, he protected us from some of the dumb things we did. Amen? Amen. I think I'd be dead if he hadn't have helped me out even before I was born again. Praise God. So he says, you know him for he's with you. He's with you. He's all around you. You know that. But now look what he goes on to say. But this one who is with you is going to be in you. Look in John chapter 20. We'll see where that happens. <clears throat> and on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. Now that's Easter morning. Easter, Easter afternoon, whenever it was. On Easter. First Sunday. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now remember, Peter, John, James, all these guys, these are old covenant men still. The new covenant has not yet come into effect. These are old covenant men. They don't have the Holy Spirit living in them. They've not been born again. They know the Holy Spirit's been with them, but He's not in them. But then it says that Jesus came, full of resurrection life, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power, and He whoosh, breathed on them. And the Spirit of God came into those men who were spiritually dead. Old Testament men, the Spirit of God came into them, releasing the life of Jesus within them. Praise God. How awesome. How awesome. It's the same picture of when Adam, when God made Adam, he made a clay man, right? And, I, and I'm sure it was a beautiful, perfect, perfect sculpture. But it's a corpse. It's dead. Adam is dead. And then God did what? Breathe. <laughs> He breathed His life, His Spirit into Adam, and Adam became a living soul, praise God. So on that first Easter day, Jesus, full of resurrection life, breathes the Holy Spirit into His disciples, and they are born again. They come alive, praise God. How awesome, how awesome is that? Wow. The Holy Spirit who was with them is now in them at the new birth. But there's one more relationship to the Holy Spirit that we're to have. 
Not only is the Spirit to be with us and in us, but the Holy Spirit is to come upon us. We know that, Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Praise God. That's the baptism right there. That's the power of baptism. The Holy Spirit with us at the new birth when we say, yes, Jesus. At the new birth, the Holy Spirit comes to live within us. Listen, don't ever try to tell a Baptist that they don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> because they know when they were born again, the Holy Spirit came to live in them. Amen? Amen. But we've got to go a step further. Not just the Holy Spirit with us, the Holy Spirit in us, but the Holy Spirit upon us. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I want, to, I want to have all three relationships with the Holy Spirit. I want Him to be with me. I want Him to be all around me, behind me, in front of me. I want Him in me, releasing the life of Jesus, teaching me about Jesus. And I want Him on me to do the power works of the kingdom. Amen? Praise God. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Praise the Lord. All right, one other thing I want to mention that I'm going to share with you my testimony of what happened to me as a Baptist preacher. Number five, the prerequisite. Oh, excuse me, Betty. Yeah, all right. One more, by the apostles. You're right. Good. Let me, let me lay that. Let me get that done. So it's promised to us in the Old Testament type by the Father God. By Jesus, it's also promised to us by the apostles. Look at Acts chapter 2. Now this is Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has come upon them. They are now out of the upper room, out in the streets. They're speaking in tongues. They're singing in tongues. Uh, all these miraculous things are happening. And then a crowd gathers and Peter begins to preach. And this is part of his sermon. He says, this Jesus God raised up, and of that we are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you see and hear. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. The this is referring to he said, Peter said to him, you killed him, but God raised him from the dead and has made him the anointed king of the whole universe. When they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they asked him, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness, for the forgiveness of sins. That's what, that was what will happen at the new birth. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For... The promise is to you. That was to those that were there listening to him that day. And to your children. That's the next generation. And to all who are far off. Everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And so Peter says, this gift is for you. It'll be for your children. And it'll be for all those who are way, way, way off. Way over there in Canyon Lake. 2,000 years from now, there's some hungry people over there that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's for them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's for us. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad God looked down and saw a hungry Baptist pastor. Way down the corridors of time, he was able to see me and said, the gift is for you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, with that, let's look at the prerequisite. Thank you, Betty, for keeping me on track. <coughs> There's only one prerequisite to re receiving the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, sometimes you take a college course. They say you have to have this course as a prerequisite first before you can take this. Well, this is the prerequisite for receiving the power experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Here it, here it is, right here in John chapter 7. Jesus tells us, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, If any one thirst, let him come to me and drink. 
He who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his river shall flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. If any man thirst, that's the prerequisite. You've got to get thirsty and hungry for more of God. If you're complacent, content where you are, you are not a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's for hungry people. It's for thirsty people. It's for people who want more of God in their life, more of the power of God in their life, want to see God use them more in the kingdom. That's the prerequisite. Praise God. It's the same thing the psalmist said in Psalm 42. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after you, O God. We don't use that word pant much, do we? But when your dog is hot and thirsty, <laughs> he's panting. And the picture here of a, is of a deer that's being chased by the dogs. And he's thinking as he runs, running for his life. If I can just make it to the riverbank and take a deep drink, I'll make it. As the deer... Pants after the water brook. So my soul panteth after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. So you've got to get hungry and thirsty. Isn't that a prerequisite of receiving anything from God? If you get, that the hungry will be filled, amen? The thirsty will get a drink. I've always said it's not hard to feed a hungry man. Easy. It's real hard to feed somebody not hungry. You just can't hardly stuff it down them. Well, that's the prerequisite. All right, let me tell you my story. <clears throat> we might run a little bit over, but I'll do the best I can. I grew up in a Baptist home. My daddy was a Baptist deacon. And uh, my parents were both Christians. And so from a very young age, I knew that the Holy Spirit was with me. I could feel him. He was in our house. He was with me. But at nine years of age, we had an, uh, an evangelist named Pastor Darby come from East Texas. He was blind physically. And he preached. And, and I remember what he said that Sunday morning as he preached. He, said, he talked about how all of us were sinners and we needed a Savior. And I knew at nine years old, I was a sinner and I needed a Savior. And I shared that with my parents that afternoon. And we knelt down together and I invited Jesus to come into my life. And when I knelt and prayed that day, the Holy Spirit who had been with me as a child now came to live within me. I was born again. Little did I know that some 20 years later, I was going to receive another baptism of fire and power. Praise God. But uh, at, at age 19, I was called to preach. I was at Texas A&M University working on a degree in wildlife management. And God said, no, i got another assignment for you. You're to be a preacher of my word. And so I changed my major, changed the whole direction of my life. And uh, Mary Bethy and we went off to Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth. Spent three years studying, studying the Bible there at Southwestern. When I graduated, I completed four years of liberal arts college, three years of seminary, seven years of education. And the denomination I was a part of said, you are equipped to be a pastor. My first church was the Buckner Boys Ranch Baptist Church up at Lake Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, it was a uh, church located on the campus of a boys ranch. Uh, the church ministered to the boys who came to live there, to the staff, and to the surrounding community. The boys who came there uh, were not orphans. They were broken home orphans. 85% of them came from alcoholic homes, and they had deep hurts and bruises. Some of them had been abused physically. All of them had been abused mentally and emotionally. They, they, were, they were really in bad shape, usually, when they got to the boys' ranch. And here I am now. I'm this young Baptist pastor out of the seminary, supposedly equipped to pastor this church. Now, I could get these boys to confess Christ, but I had no clue of how to have them get set free from all the bondage and the hurt and the wounds that they received. I knew nothing about 
the healing of the inner man. I knew nothing about deliverance and casting out demons. I knew none of that. And so it, it didn't take me very long to become frustrated as this Baptist pastor who's supposed to be equipped. But I know I'm not. So within six months, I'm discouraged and I am disillusioned. And about that time, the Baptist association that, I, that our church was in, uh, any of you that know anything about Baptists, they have associations yes. where you have diff different Baptist churches in that region that are associated. And they would have an associational meeting uh, ever so often where all the churches could come together. And uh, so they're going to have an association meeting. And me as the new young pastor of uh, Buckner, Boys Ranch Baptist Church, I was invited to be the speaker. And they assigned me the subject. They assigned me the subject of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I said, oh my, I better start studying this Bible. I don't know much about him. Three years of seminary and I hadn't heard a whole lot about this person called the Holy Spirit. And so this, this was God's hand working in me. So, I be, so for several weeks ahead, I, I took this Bible. And I went through the New Testament and every reference to the Holy Spirit, I wrote it down and wrote out the verse. And I began to discover this Bible is full of this person called the Holy Spirit. And I began to see that there... In the book of Acts, there was a power experience that came after the new birth. A power experience to do the works of the kingdom. That was right there in the New Testament. And those who received that power experience, they spoke in new tongues. All that I'm discovering. And so I began to cry out to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Also at this time, I had a, a bondage in my life that I couldn't break. I tried and tried and tried. I could not break it. And so here I am. I'm the pastor of this church, but I'm, I've got a bondage in my life. And I don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, but I'm beginning to get hungry, 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 hungry. I mean, you know sometimes desperation will get you hungry. And so I'm crying out for two things. I want to be delivered from this bondage. Second, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, about that same time that I'm studying the New Testament, a book comes into my hand written by David Wilkerson. It's called The Cross and the Switchblade. Uh -oh. Some of you read that book years ago. And... Uh, I began to read that book and discovered that this experience that I was reading about in this book of Acts, about this baptism of the Holy Spirit, it was happening on the streets of New York among these game members who were being saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, oh my, that means it can happen today. It can happen today. And so I'm praying to be filled with the Holy Spirit, delivered from this bondage. Well, we had a revival scheduled for our Baptist church. You remember, those of you who weren't Baptist, some of you other denominations... Baptists every year had to have a revival. Usually it wasn't a revival, it was a week-long meeting, is what it was. But we had to have a revival meeting. It was scheduled. It's on the calendar. And so uh, my job is to find the preacher to come and preach the revival. And, and so I said, I sure didn't want to preach it, because I'm doing good to make it Sunday to Sunday. And so I said, Lord, you lead me to the person who's supposed to preach the revival. Just left it with that. And the, and the date's getting closer and closer. One day Beth and I took a day off. And we drove up in the hill country around Fredericksburg. And I saw this little white cracker box Baptist building. And it's on, on it it said, Pastor Calvin Gustin. And the Holy Ghost just spoke to me and said, call him. He'll preach the revival for you. Well, I didn't know him. I didn't know if he could preach a lick. The only little bit I'd heard about him, he'd been a singer in the seminary. So I called him up. And I said, Calvin, this is Jimmy Darnell. I'm the pastor of the uh, Buckner Boys Ranch Baptist Church. And we have a revival meeting scheduled this certain week in June. Uh, you think you might could come be our preacher? He didn't say, hey, I'll pray about it. I'll think about it. He said, I'll come. Well, that Sunday morning of the, rev the revival started, I preached. That afternoon he came in. He's going to start that night and go a whole week. He looked at me. He said, Brother Darnell, I don't know you and you don't know me. He said, before anything this week, before we say anything, I've got to tell you about a wonderful thing that has happened to me. And he began to describe the same bondage that I was under. And he said, but I've been set free. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Said, oh, whoa. You know, I never told him my problem. I never told him. I just said under my breath, Lord, you did it for him. You did it for me. I was instantly set free from that bondage and stepped into a new dimension of the Holy Spirit. Higher than I'd ever walked in before. And it was wonderful. 
I didn't have yet received the baptism, but I've received a, a, a new dose of the Holy Spirit. I mean, a new presence. It was, it was good. Praise God. Well, eventually I left that church and moved to San Marcos, where I became the assistant chaplain, Bible teacher, and history teacher at the San Marcos Baptist Academy. So you know that school in, in, in San Marcos. And uh, I, I served there for six years. During the first four years, I never did go back down to where I had been before. I, I lived at that level of the Holy Spirit that I had, I had encountered there uh, when we had that revival. I, I'm living in that new encounter, but I've not gone on. I've not pressed on. There was more. I hadn't pressed on. Well, the chaplain came to me and he said, Jimmy, he said, why don't you be in charge of Religious Emphasis Week this year? Okay. Religious Emphasis Week was something that was on the calendar at that, 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 that Baptist school. And every, every year we had to have Religious Emphasis Week. It was awful. Uh, usually they brought in some egg-headed professor who lectured about God on a blackboard. All the kids slept. All the teachers slept. Everybody hated it. But we had to have it. So I, so I said, oh, Lord, if we got to have it, how about let's have something that will shake the place? That's my prayer. <laughs> I didn't, go look, I didn't go looking for a preacher or anything. I'm just waiting, and the day's getting closer. And one day, this little girl comes into my office. I later found out she was the only spirit-baptized girl on the campus. And she said, Brother Darnell, I understand that you're in charge of Religious Emphasis Week. I said, I am. She said, last week, a couple came to my mom and daddy's church in Lubbock and gave their testimony, turned the whole church upside down, and they have a ministry right over here in San Antonio. Do you think we could get them to come? Their ministry calls Teen Challenge. Oh. I said, maybe so. So I called Ray Johnson, Teen Challenge San Antonio, and told him who I was. And I said, we have religious sense a week. You think you can come and speak? He, said, oh. he didn't say, I'll think about it, pray about it. Oh, we'll come. And we'll bring a bunch of our kids and let them testify about what God's done in their lives. I said, wonderful. Well, a couple weeks later, he called me back. He said, hey, before we come, why don't you bring a group of your young people over here to see what's happening over here? Said, okay, so I gathered up some of our better young people. <laughs> now, this, this school was Christian and Baptist in name, but it, it wasn't Christian. And I, we went to San Antonio. We first visited the boys' home, the boys' ministry. And there were guys sitting in there, you know, teeth knocked out. You could, I mean, you, who had been on heroin for 25 years, you could see the marks of sin in their bodies. And they're sitting there smiling and saying, praise Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Then we went over to the girls' home where we we're going to have supper. When I walked through the door of that girls' home that evening, the Holy Spirit was in there like a cloud. And he just fell on me. And God said, this is what you've been looking for all this time. I sat down there at the table to eat supper with those girls. And they're sharing their testimonies. And, and, and I'm, just, I'm just crying. I can't eat. I'm just sitting there crying. This is what you've been looking for all these years. Well, not long after they came... They brought a group of their young people. They began to give their testimonies about how they'd been on drugs and how God had saved them, filled them with the Holy Spirit. I mean, God shook the place. A hundred kids got saved that week. I mean, it was radical. Everybody liked it except the Baptist hierarchy. Well, out of that, out of that, I get, began to gather some of these new kids, these kids that received Christ, and we began to pray, have the weekly prayer meeting, we were praying particularly to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We saw what we needed. We knew we had to have that. We are praying to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And one day we're in there praying, and they were in my office, we were all kneeling down praying, and a little girl starts speaking in tongues. I thought, oh my, I'm supposed to be the leader, and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Well, 
Not long after that, this same little girl that told me about Teen Challenge came back in my, came in my office. She said, she said, Brother Darnell, I, see, I know you're so hungry and want to receive the Holy Spirit. She said, my Sunday school teacher I went to Baylor University, and they're now here at Southwest Texas working on a master's degree, and they have a prayer group in their home, and uh, he'd be glad to pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I called Sam Wilson immediately. And he said, oh, yes, brother. He said, we're having a meeting tonight. Come over tonight, and we'll pray for you. Well, I said, I have to preach in chapel tonight. As soon as I get through preaching, I'll head over there to your meeting. Well, I mean, I got out the back door of the chapel fast, and I'm driving across San Marcos, and this thought came to my mind. Now, this may sound silly to you, but at that time, I was the president of the Canyon Bass Club in San Marcos. Thought, catching lots of bass, I always had my picture in a paper with big bass, and, the Holy, and I said to God, I said, Lord, I would rather receive the Holy Spirit than catch them. Boy, when I said that, I knew I meant business. I was dead serious. Well, I got there, and Sam Wilson said, there's one other couple there who helped them with the meeting, but none of the students came. He said, looks like the meeting is for you tonight, Brother Darnell. Huh? So he took this Bible. He began to go through basically what I did this morning, y'all, laying the foundation of baptism. When he got through, and I, I, could get, I could turn to those scriptures faster. I had studied them. I knew them. And when he got through, I said, all right. I believe every word. Now I want it to happen. And I'm glad I was with faith people. He said, you kneel down here. When we lay our hands on you, you're going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad he didn't say you're going to have to tarry for 40 years. Begging. Tearing. All of that. He said, when we lay our hands on you, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. So they laid their hands on me. It was like heaven came down to that house, descended down upon me, and I began to speak in tongues. And when I heard myself speaking in tongues, I cut it off. I said, My Baptists aren't supposed to do that. And Sam, being a very wise man, said, Jimmy, go home, get alone tonight. He said, God's going to come. Hour. So I went home. I told Bethy, I said, Honey, I. I I just, I'm going to stay in the camp and trailer that night. I still feel the presence of God. So I got in that camp and trailer that night. I mean, the windows of heaven. I began to speak in languages that I had never learned. Scriptures that I had learned as a child just began to flood up in my heart, out of my mouth. I sang, I shouted, I prayed in tongues, I prayed in English. It was a glory, glory, power in my life. Three weeks later, Bethany left. And this was our introduction into the world. Things began to happen supernaturally. People began to show up at our house with six babies who didn't know us. Said God said to come to this house, if you lay your hands on our baby, you'll be healed. We lay our hands on those babies, they get healed. Very quickly, I was somewhat, the Full Gospel Business, Business Association in San Antonio heard about my story. They invited me to come be the speaker. So I went over there and shared my testimony. And the first one, they brought a boy up front who had just been diagnosed. They said, lay your hands on him. Let's go. Okay. So I laid my hands on that boy, prayed for him. A couple of years later, I saw somebody who was in that, that boy you laid your hands on. Complete. No leukemia in his body. And just things like that began to, began to happen. The Baptist preacher at First Baptist Church in San Marcos was a friend of mine, Paul Powell. The Baptist deacons were giving him a fit. No deacons are supposed to be helpers. These guys were fitted. They were getting it. And he was worrying about it. He got a big ulcer. So he came to me and said, Jimmy, I don't believe in healing and I don't believe in healers, but God told me to come and have you lay your hands on me and pray. So we went down by the river, sat on a log, I laid my hands. I didn't see him for a while, and I heard he was in the hospital. So I went to see him. Jimmy, you can't believe it. He said, I'm back in the hospital, but they x-rayed me, and where that big ulcer was, there's nothing now there but scar tissue, completely healed. And they said, but you're about to get another one if you keep on worrying. If you'll quit worrying, you're okay. 
Those were the things that began to happen. We began to share with some of our friends, mainly Baptists, around us, and a prayer group grew up in our, in our house. And then uh, a coffee house. We started a coffee house downtown uh, on the square in San Marcos. Morningstar Coffee House. And during the years it operated, hundreds of kids who were hooked on drugs, were lost, without hope. Hundreds came to Christ through that coffee house. They came from the university. They came from the Gary Job Corps Training Center. They came from the local high school. All these kids are flowing into the coffee house. Just miracles are happening. So out of all of that, then we started the church, the country church. I became the first pastor. Out of that, we started a Bible college, training young men that were called to ministry. Out of that, we started a number of churches in the region, Colorado and Texas churches coming out of that church, out of that Bible college. Uh, let me tell you one other story, uh, and we're, we're going to pray for you. Uh, during those early years, we, we were pretty wild. Real wild. And uh, a friend of mine called me, he's a Baptist, over in uh, Gonzales. He said, hey, I've met this missionary, and, and I think God wants me to buy him an airplane. It's going to cost me $90,000. He said, he said, a place called Honduras. They said, I don't even know where that is. He said, let's, he said, can we go to Honduras and see it? Before I buy that airplane? I said, no. I said, let's just take backpacks and we'll go out in the jungle. So we've got, he, he bought us both a ticket to Tegucigalpe. We got our packs and we flew to Honduras. Uh, we got there in, into the airport. Now the missionary he's going to buy the airplane for out, is in the States raising money. He's not there. So we don't know where to start. We're just in Honduras. And so I said, Bobby, I said, uh, Bobby, Bobby, I know all uh, capital cities have a roster of mission. Yep, we got that. We started going through that. I said, let's just start call, calling some missionaries and see what door might open. So we started off with a Southern Baptist. Called this first one. I said, hello, brother. My name is Jimmy Darnell. My buddy and I here just been filled with the Holy Spirit. God told us to come down to Honduras. We'd love to just come down here and pray for the sick and teach the Bible. Got real silent. He said, sounds like that's stuff that Ed King's into to me. Next, Southern Baptist. Called him, brother. My buddy and I are just down here. We feel like God called us to Honduras. Come down here and preach the gospel, heal the sick. Uh, you need any help? Silent. Sounds like that stuff Ed King's in to me. Third one, Southern Baptist. Same response. That sounds like what Ed King's doing to me. I turned to Bubba and said, Bubba, I don't know who Ed King is, but I think he's our man. <laughs> so I looked down the list. Sure enough, Ed King, Mennonite missionary. I called him. He said, oh, brother. Oh, I'm so glad y'all are here. I'll be there to pick you up in a minute. So... We didn't really get to go to the jungle preaching. We ended up ministering in the city of Tegucigalpa the whole week. Uh, Ed King had a church he was pastor. He had a huge youth ministry that he was overseeing. It was massive. God was doing that. And the Catholics, the Holy Spirit began to fall upon some of the Catholic people. They didn't know how to handle it. So they turned the Catholic charismatic work over to Ed King. He said, there'll be a meeting Tuesday night. He said, I'll take you. Speak there. So we went to that Catholic charismatic meeting. The room is packed with Catholics. And uh, so I spoke on the new birth and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I had to make sure these people understand they New birth, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said, now all of you who want to receive Christ, and those of you who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, come up here. I have a hundred people hundred people or more, they're just crowded all over the front. I said, all right. I said, Bubba and I are going to begin to come and lay our hands on you. When we lay our hands on you, don't pray anymore in Spanish, don't pray in English, pray in the new language that God gives you out of your spirit. So, Bubba, let's start. Well, Bubba's one of these Baptists. He'd, he'd had a real power experience. He'd never spoken to him. He went up to the first lady. He said, lady, when I lay my hands on you, you and I are both going to start speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> he did. So it, it, th those were the sort of things. That, whoa. 
And, and that's, that, that's been 50 years. 50 years. And I'm still loving it. Still love it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I know this story probably bothers some of you. Don't believe it. That's okay. I, I just want you to hear it. And I want to pray for people. I want to receive this power of the Spirit. You know you've been born again. You know the Holy Spirit lives in you. You need Him to come up. Do the works of the Give you boldness to... Bring in the harvest. Bring in, Pentecost is the harvest. Let's bring in the harvest. So, I'm going to pray. The moment I finish praying, any of you that are hungry, like I said, if you're not hungry, you're satisfied where you are, don't come and pray. If you're hungry, more of God. Thirsty, more of God. I want you to come to pray. And Don's going to begin to worship their own Diana. So, uh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. So good. Thank you. Thankful that the Holy Spirit came upon the church. So thankful, Lord. Down through the years, you poured out your spirit on your hungry. Pray today, Lord. This altar be full of the anointing and power of God. Lord, we can feel your presence. We want to feel your presence. Feel the altar full of the power of God. Lord, we thank you when we lay hands on people today, they will receive the Holy Spirit because everyone who asks, Jesus such loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. power and anointing, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Now, we, we all know that little song, it's so beautiful. Now this time, let's start off in English, just the first little phrase, then change over and, and sing in the Spirit. If you can speak in the spirit you can sing in the spirit so we're going to sing we're going to sing in the holy ghost here in a minute so we start off singing jesus loves me and just quickly switch right into that new language from heaven just let it flow in just let it flow in there sherry okay just let it flow in these words all right here we go jesus loves me jesus Ishande ki saya no ilahan ishitayom. Kiss Jesus loves me. Keshitaylo son. Ile ki sayo. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Now, every day, every day, the, the Bible says, he that prays in a tongue edifies himself, builds himself up. So pray every day in the Spirit. Pray every day. In English, pray in the Spirit. You'll edify yourself. You'll build yourself up in the kingdom. Praise God. So let's do that. And then sing every day in the Spirit. Just begin to sing some chorus, you know, and let it flow right into the Ruby language. That's right, baby. It's like you're singing in the spirit, Beverly. Just let it begin to flow. You're so awesome, Jesus. You're so awesome, Lord. You're the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, and we worship you and we bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. 
And I remember what the Bible says, be ye continually filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. You continually. Every day pray in the Spirit. Every day pray in English. Every day study your Bible. All Keep on. Be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. All right. Uh, I'm going to close this because the, the boss lady told me to. She said, no need to Jerry. You have to walk back up there. So, okay. Let's, let's, let's uh, uh, just ask the Lord and thank Him for what He's done. Father, we thank You for what You've done today. We thank You for people being filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank You that they'll remember always Pentecost Sunday, the day the Holy Spirit came upon me giving me power to do the works of the kingdom. We thank you and we praise you and we bless you. Oh, you're so good. You're so good. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right, Jerry. Help me out, Jerry. Help me. Help me. Oh, my. How do you know you've been to a cowboy church? Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> praise the Lord. You're on your own. <laughs> You're on your own. I'm not allowed to say that anymore because Clark doesn't like it. Oh, okay. I'll just say it. <laughs> Every once in a while we do it anyway. Preachers, come here for a minute. Oh, praise We're God. none of us are. Hallelujah. Amen. God is with us. Amen. Amen. He's with us. Charles, good to see you. Good.